So, so far in this lesson, we've looked at the periodic table. And that tells us a lot of important, useful information about atoms. So the atoms are, that make up all of our elements. The most important thing as chemists is understanding your electron configuration. So how many electrons we've got, how many bonds, electrons, that sort of thing. So one of the atoms we really focused on is chlorine. And we had chlorine being number 17. Okay, and we knew that 17 meant that it had 17 protons. So it had 17 electrons, and those electrons were arranged in, in 2, 8, 7. So we knew that it had 7 valence electrons. We also therefore should know that to be stable, to be more stable, it needs one more electron, either to share one electron with something else, or to grab an electron of something else. So chlorine can become a chloride ion with a negative one charge by gaining one more electron. So it's going to have two, eight, eight as its electron configuration, which is stable because it's got eight electrons in its valence or outermost shell. It still has 17 protons. So it still has 17 positive charges, but it now has 18 negative charges. And the difference between those is one negative, which is why it has a charge of one negative. Okay. So the periodic table allows us to know what ions things can form. If things form ions, they then have to find an oppositely charged ion. So negative ions, which we call anions, are attracted to positively charged cations. Because of their opposite charges. But when an ionic compound is formed, it, like an atom, has to have no charge. So the charges may, the ions may be attracted to each other, but their charges have to cancel out. This is really easy if we had something like, say, sodium and chloride ions, because this is plus one and this is minus one. The plus and the minus attract each other, but they also cancel each other out. A sodium chloride, the sodium chloride has got no charge because they cancel out. It gets a little bit harder when we get to something like, let's say, calcium and chloride. There are two pluses here. It's got more positive charge because being 2882, which was its original electron configuration, it loses these two electrons, becoming 2 plus. But chloride is only 1 minus. So calcium ions will attract chloride ions, but to make the compound, to make the ionic compound, we need an, another chloride ion to balance out the two. So we need two chloride. Now we've got two minuses and two positives. When they join together, we write that as CaCl, and then this little two explains why we've got or explains that we've got two of these. Okay. Then it gets a bit more complicated. Some ions are made up of more than one atom. For example, the nitrate ion, and I'm sorry, I'm going to go over to the right here because I'm running out of depth on my board. But let's say we had calcium and we had nitrate. This is two plus, this is only one minus, so I need two of these to balance it out. So then when I put that together, it could look like this. Well, that actually means 32 oxygens. So the way that I show it means two nitrates, as I package, like I would in maths, I guess, I package the nitrate together with brackets. So it's two nitrogens and two times three, six oxygens. So I use the brackets to show that it's two nitrates, two of the whole ion. We have a little trick for working these out because they can get a bit more complicated, like when there's a 
two positive charge on something and three minus on the other, for example. And so we have a little trick called drop and swap that we can use. And I'll quickly show you that with calcium nitrate. We're not getting back to the CA, you know, and that and that one. Because these ion charges are not the same, so one's got a two and one doesn't have a number at all, we drop the number and then we swap it for the other ion. In doing so, we end up having CaNO3. We've moved the two down here and then across. And again, because it's not 32, we package the NO3 as a 2. The reason this becomes really useful is when we get things like, let's say, um, aluminium oxide. AL is 3 plus, and oxide is 2 minus. To just write them out so that the balance out can be quite tricky and time consuming. But if I take, because the 3 and the 2 are different numbers, I'll take the 3 and I'll drop it and swap it. But I'm also, also going to take the 2 and drop it and swap it. And I end up with this formula. The, three, the 2 has been dropped and swapped to the aluminium, same as 2 aluminium ions. And the 3 has been dropped and swapped, same as 3 oxide ions. Now, my check is, do those charges cancel out? So there's the same number of pluses as there are minuses. Well, two three pluses would be six plus, and three two minuses would be six minus. So I've got six positive charges and six negative charges, so they do indeed cancel out. So this would be correct. The key thing you need to be able to do is, given the formula of an ion, or having worked it out from the periodic table, you should be able to infer the formula of an ionic compound. Now, just one quick clarification about ionic compounds. There is no such thing as a calcium nitrate particle. It doesn't have just one calcium and two nitrates. These are ratios. Sorry, maths is coming in a bit here. This is why maths is so useful. It means for every one calcium ion in this particle, in this crystal, you will find two nitrate particles as well, or ions as well. It's going to be huge, huge numbers. We end up using a unit called the mole to describe because we're talking about things with 23, 24 zeros after the numbers of particles. This is different to a molecule. You can have an H2O molecule, which is only one oxygen atom and two hydrogens. In ions, the formula is a ratio, not an absolute number of particles. For every one of these, there's two of these. For every two of these, there's three of these. And that's the really important difference between ionic and molecular. We'll do molecular later. The key statement is that an ionic formula is a ratio of ions. Okay? And again, remembering that charges have to cancel out or add up to zero. Uh, 